In this lecture, we're going to talk about the bystander effect, which is easily the most famous kind of concept we'll talk about in pro-social behavior. So uh, the bystander effect is that people are less likely to offer help when they're in a group than when they are alone. And there's this very famous case of Kitty Genovese, and I'm not going to give too much detail about it, but essentially she was murdered in front of an apartment building, and there were a lot of people that watched her be murdered and didn't necessarily do anything about it. And this sparked a ton of outrage, and um, these two psychologists, Darley and Latine, were very interested in why it happened. And there's a link I have here if you want to learn more about the specific case. One of the reasons why the bystander effect occurs is because of diffusion of responsibility. And diffusion of responsibility occurs when there are multiple people around who could help, but it's not clear who should help. So let's say this guy trips and falls, and then these people see it. Well, which of these people is the one who should be helping? If they're all kind of looking at each other being like, are you going to help? Am I going to help? I'm not even sure who's helping. Nobody's actually helping because the responsibility for helping this guy who fell is diffused across all of them. But if it were a single person, that single person might say, oh, it's my responsibility. There's nobody else who can help. I need to go help. Another reason why the bystander effect occurs is because we don't necessarily notice that there's an emergency. In a group, we typically aren't paying as much attention to our surroundings as when we're alone. So when we're in a group, you kind of you're looking around and um, you might notice if somebody gets really close to you, but generally you're kind of doing your own thing. Conversely, when you're all by yourself, you have a heightened sense of awareness and you are very much paying attention to your surroundings. And if something happens, you will notice it. And there are several documented cases of people who had problems. Like there was a woman who had a nail sticking out of her head and uh, she was outside walking around other people and nobody did anything about it. And most people just didn't even notice it because they really weren't looking for a woman to have a nail sticking out of her head. And so they just never even noticed that she had one. Informational social influence also affects or is a reason why the bystander effect occurs. So if you remember, informational social influence says that we look to other people for information about the situation. So um, for the bystander effect, the way informational social influence occurs is if no one else is doing anything, people assume everything is fine. So here's this example of this sign that says, danger, no swimming. And then there's still people swimming in the water. And what's happening is they're all looking at each other like, well, those people are swimming, so it must be okay. They must know something I don't, and it's actually just fine to swim here. And actually, the story comes from... Um, a place in England where these, this person had drowned in this lake the day before this picture was taken. And so uh, it was a very serious risk to be swimming in this lake. And yet people were there and they're like, well, other people are swimming. It doesn't seem like that big of a deal. So I'm going to go ahead and swim. So that's how informational social influence works. So this is kind of a helping yourself situation. But for other times, if you, for example, see this woman who has a nail in her head and nobody's doing something. You might think, oh, well, everybody must know that it's a prop and it's not, she doesn't actually have a nail in her head. It's just this prop. And so I'm not going to worry about it. Nobody else is reacting like it's an emergency. So I am not going to react like it's an emergency because they must know something I don't. So there's a decision model of bystander intervention, and these things must happen in order for somebody to help. So the first is somebody has to notice the emergency. So like we've talked about when you're in a group, you're less likely to even notice the emergency. The next thing is that you have to label it as an emergency. So you have to say, okay, this really is a problem and I am going to uh, do something about it, which is you taking responsibility. 
And then you say, okay, this is how I'm going to help. So you need to go through all four steps to actually get to helping. And when you understand how that um, there can be problems with each of those four steps, you can understand how when being in a group, it's much less likely that you're going to help than when you're on your own.